CompC.com is your home for buying, selling, and flipping all of the hottest trading cards. Their consignment marketplace is home to over 23 million cards across all major eras and genres. With a CompC.com account, you can purchase cards from different sellers over time and ship them home together later or immediately reprice them for sale on the CompC marketplace to try and flip. To continue serving collectors as our hobby grows, ComC is actively hiring for a range of different roles. Learn more and apply online at comc.com slash jobs. You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Wax Back Hero Sports Card Minute. Today, I've got a topic for you that's going to hit a little bit on the business side. Well, probably a combination of both the hobby and business side. Imagine that. I'm going to talk about the strategy that I've been experimenting with over the last couple months utilizing some of the on-demand offerings from Tops and Leaf. And so I'm going to talk about what my thought process is, why I'm trying out this experiment to see how it works, which products I'm experimenting with and which ones I'm not, and I'll talk about what I've seen so far and what my results have been so far with my experiment. First, I want to tell you about one of my sponsors, Underdog Collectibles. They're an online shop run by collectors for collectors. They break new product every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night and usually offer a variety of basketball, baseball, football, even wrestling from time to time gets mixed in there. And you can also buy sealed boxes from them on their website. If you want to break it yourself at your own house and not participate in the online break, you can buy boxes directly from them as well. You can also join their Facebook group where there's guys and gals that get together and talk about the hits that they got. They talk about collecting. They ask questions. It's a great Facebook community. And you can subscribe on YouTube to watch those breaks live on their YouTube channel. So check out Underdog Collectibles at udogcollect.com and tell them Wax Pack Hero sent you. All right, let's talk a little bit about these on-demand sets. If you're not real familiar, they are products that are sold by the the manufacturers directly on their website to consumers, typically for a limited window of, of time. And after that, no more are printed. And so the print runs for these cards can vary significantly. Some as few as 30, 40, 50 for some of the Panini racing cards that they did back in 2017, 2016, and then up to tens of thousands of cards for some of the more popular offerings. The manufacturers have been doing them for a few years now. Tops Now was the first baseball one that came out. Tops Living Set is another example that followed shortly after that. Panini Instant is their version of it. And Leaf also has a on-demand version for some of their products as well that has been going on for a period of time. Initially, I didn't really get much involved in the Tops Now portion. I did collect the Tops Living Set for quite a while. And the Panini Instant Racing stuff is stuff that I got aftermarket i never was into that at the time that it was available live on the site and so i've only bought those panini instant racing cards on the secondary market that's how i got exposure a little bit and you would actually see some decent secondary market values for some of these things the tops living set had cards that were selling for hundreds of dollars that were originally available for five or six or eight bucks on the site but at the same time there's other on-demand cards that don't have as much of a following and you barely can break even and that's one of the interesting market dynamics that's one of the things i find interesting about it is that it takes some study it takes some research and it takes some strategy to try to figure out which of these things will hold value and which ones won't and that's really why i call this an experiment i'm experimenting with some different sports some different product lines than i'm typically involved with and so i'm learning along the way to see if things will hold value and if things won't hold value. But I enjoy experimenting, I enjoy learning, and since I'm using profits to pay for these cards, uh, the financial risk really isn't all that great either. But let's go ahead and dig into some of the products that I am experimenting with today. The first one I wanna talk about is the Topps Game Within the Game product. It's an artistic card product that has been out since early 2020. 
2020 was the first year of the product. It continued on into 2021 with the same artist, Paul Jenis, uh, but there's a slightly different design. I got into this set last year through one of my friends who had been throwing in some of the Game Within a Game cards as a bonus for some of the other orders that I was placing with him. And then late in the year, I decided to pick it up and continue it as one of the products that I was going to experiment with. And I started buying them myself with the last card of 2020, which was Mike Trout. Now these run about $8 a piece if you buy one card, but if you buy a 20 pack, you can get that price down to about $4 delivered with tax and everything. And so that's what I did. I started buying 20 of these with the Mike Trout and it had a print run of about 66, 6,700. And I uh, paid about four bucks a piece. And my success on selling these so far has been somewhat limited. I've sold a few in the shop and I've sold a handful online, but they really just haven't caught on at the price level that I'm charging. I'm charging somewhere around eight bucks, which is about list price for a single card, but lets me um, basically double my money, a little less than that after taxes and shipping and some of those types of things. And the same concept has continued through the first three cards of 2021. There was a Ronald Acuna, a Babe Ruth, and a Juan Soto that have been printed so far. Roberto Clemente is the current card that's live. These cards are live for about three weeks, and I thought there might be a little more secondary market traction than there has been up to this point. And so it's going a little bit slower than I thought it might. And so because of that, my most recent order, I went ahead and revised it from 20 cards down to 10 cards. I am still not back to even yet on these. Like I said, I have sold some, but I've not sold enough to break even or get back to even yet. And so, so far, I would say the results for this game within the game set have been somewhat mixed. I love the cards. I love the artwork. The quality on these things is great. I think part of the issue is people don't necessarily know about them, and therefore they don't really know what they are and what they're going to be getting, and that has hindered sales a little bit. And so that's my thoughts on the game within a game set. The second one is going to be kind of quick because there's not a lot to actually talk about as far as results. But the second one that I've been experimenting with is the new Topps Sports Illustrated cover set. Topps has partnered with Sports Illustrated to make cards utilizing some kind of legendary MLB themed covers of former Sports Illustrated magazines. And that's gonna be a set that runs throughout 2021 and it runs from $10 for one card down to about $5 per card if you buy a 20 pack. And for the first several, I went ahead and bought 20. Uh, actually, the first four, I went ahead and bought 20. But it is taking tops forever to get these shipped. It's been, I don't know, a few weeks now, and even cards number one and two still have not shipped yet. I just have a sneaking suspicion that these may not go over real well. There doesn't seem to be a lot of buzz around them online. Uh, if you look at the pre-sales, they've been somewhat mixed. I'm just not real confident in what this set's going to turn out to be. So this is another one where I scaled back for cards number five and six to only buying 10 instead of buying that 20 pack. And we'll let that run for a while. I still plan to continue at least buying some of these throughout the entire run so I will have some full complete sets to sell. But the results are pending for this one because I don't have any in hand to actually sell to see what those results are going to be like. But the second set that I'm experimenting with is the Tops On Demand Sports Illustrated set. The third one is one that I'm really enjoying, and that is the brand new Tops WWE Living set. As I said before, I had collected the baseball living set for quite a while. I collected from up to card about 350 or so, and I, but I missed out at the beginning. I missed out on that first run of cards, and I had to play catch up. And I didn't want to make that same mistake with the WWE living set. Now, wrestling cards have been growing in popularity, and I wanted to get in on this set from ground zero. And so I did. I started buying a 20-pack of these as well. Similar to the Game Within a Game set, these WWE Living Set cards start at $8 a card, but if you buy a 20-pack, you get that cost down to about $4 a card. And I've been pretty 
happy with the results so far as far as the quality of the product and the cards themselves and who is actually in the set. It started out with card number one being Stone Cold Steve Austin. That has sold the most of any card up to this point at around uh, 5,500 cards. Now there's been a, a few divas that have been in there. Those have sold well. The Stone Colds have sold well. Undertaker was one who's just now been in hand and that one has sold well. But some of the other cards have had print runs under a thousand. And despite that, they still haven't sold real well. The, the prices have been okay, but the volume hasn't really been there. And so this is another one where I'd say my results so far have been mixed. I've been pleased with the what I've been able to get from some of these cards, but at the same time, there's some that just are lagging a little bit. The set really hasn't caught on with wide popularity, as you can see from both the direct print runs and the secondary um, sales volume, if you check that on eBay. And so I think the jury's still out on whether or not this is going to be a long-term winner. But for now, I'm continuing to buy these at 20 cards for every, every release, and I'm going to let that run for a little while. If we see things, you know, um, continue to, to fall off, if we see sales continue to drag, I might scale that back a little bit. But for now, this is one where I'm going to continue to buy 20 every time and continue to try to sell them for $8 to $10 a card, depending on who it is. And I'm hoping that even as print runs might sag a little bit, that's going to lead to a little bit higher secondary market values for those hardcore collectors who want to go back and pick up this set. There's one more Tops On Demand product that I've been experimenting with as well, and it's one, it's soccer. And I've tried a variety of different soccer Tops Now products as an experiment with my points. You get rewards points with every purchase on Tops.com, and I've redeemed those points towards getting free Tops Now soccer cards. And actually, those have sold the fastest and for the most money of any of the other on-demand products I've gotten so far. However, I've not actually bought any directly. That doesn't seem very smart, does it? And maybe I'll need to switch that here in the near future because those soccer tops now cards have been great sellers and they sell quickly. I've had very little problem getting those and that's added a nice little profit booster for me. And so using my points towards free Tops Now soccer cards has probably been the most successful product that I've done so far on Tops.com with these on-demand offerings. I might have to switch up my strategy a little bit and expand into buying some of the soccer on-demand products when they become available. Tops, however, isn't the only manufacturer that I'm experimenting with. With Leaf's recent acquisition of the ProSet license or the ProSet trademark, they started releasing an on-demand product using the classic 1989 ProSet design. And they started it off with some of the football draft picks from 2021. Trevor Lawrence was the first card that they released and it sold an incredible amount of copies. There were over 57,000 cards that got sold for that first Trevor Lawrence card. They followed it up a little bit later with Justin Fields and Devonta Smith in a second window. And the third window had six more players, actually five football players. And Bryson DeChambeau was a, the first golf card that was included as a Leaf XRC. That one I, did, I wasn't too sure about. Did I want to go ahead and buy the DeChambeau too? Um, but I'm glad I did, I think. There were 17,000 cards that sold in that, in that window. And uh, it's going to be an interesting mix if they're going to start to turn it into a multi-sport product. What have the results been like for this Leaf one, you might ask? Well, the Trevor Lawrence is the only card that I've gotten in hand. And despite there being 57,111 of them that were sold by Leaf, the resale value has been great. I've sold several online for, I think, $12 to $15 a card. I've sold a handful of them in the shop as well, and I'm holding back a few more to see what happens. Now the others, even though their order windows have closed, I'm still waiting on them to ship. I'm not sure what's going on with these. It's been a little bit frustrating. I got a shipping notice on March 20th, and here I am on April 3rd, and the shipping notice still says the USPS is awaiting the, the product to be mailed. And so I don't really know what's going on. There's been no communication from Leaf, which has been a little frustrating. 
but I do really like the product. And that Trevor Lawrence card looks awesome in hand. So I think these are going to be a, a sneaky little surprise. I've been buying 10 packs of these Leaf ones. Uh, it comes out to be about 5 bucks plus shipping for for each card. Uh, so it's it's not too bad. That's, that's a decent price. I think there's going to be a little bit of traction. The nostalgia aspect is real and they're popular. They're mixing in a few intentional variations and error cards, quote unquote error cards, and those have had great resale value. So if you're lucky enough to get one of those random error cards in your package, you're going to do really well with these. But it's been a fun product. I, I really like it. I just wish the communication was a little bit better and that they'd actually start shipping. Overall, as I've kind of described along the way, my results so far have been somewhat mixed. There's not a ton of people that have these in quantity, but at the same time, being that they're a little bit niche and only available on tops.com, the market isn't really as high for them either. And so my play is that the demand is gonna grow over time as people learn more and more about these, and that that's going to lead to me having enough quantity to sell to meet that demand, which is going to lead to some future profits. Is it going to play out that way? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm having fun with the experiment. I'm having fun learning. I'm having fun adjusting on the fly of how many I'm buying each time. Is that going to be a better way to utilize those resources that I've got to meet that demand? Am I still able to make it a pro make a profit or not? There's the aspect that each of these purchases gets me points, which I can turn into free cards, which also helps supplement that profit. And so there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of moving parts, and it's fun to experiment with. We'll see how it goes. You know, there's the, the biggest drivers. This has been going on for about two months. But with all these products and with the increased popularity of cards and the limited production capacity, there's still a good portion of these cards that are in the mail or waiting to be delivered to me. And that, of course, also impacts my ability to sell them. So those production delays and shipping delays are also something that has impacted my success so far. If you want to learn more about these products, I have got articles and photo checklists with the print runs for all of these products at my website, waxpackhero.com. I will also include links to these in the show notes. So you can also just go to the show notes, click the link, learn more about the set that I'm talking about. If you want to buy cards directly from me, you can find those on eBay or Sport Lots. And if you want to buy them directly, you can use the link in the show notes to go to tops.com and check them out for yourself. I hope you found that somewhat interesting. I hope you found that somewhat helpful. Maybe exposed you to some products that you didn't even know existed. Let me know. Reach out at waxpackhero at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at TheMikeSummer. Leave a rating and review on your podcast app of choice. And if you're in central Illinois, come on into the shop and we'll have a conversation. Well, that's all I've got for you today. So I'll catch you next time.